So there are times you might be tweaking things in Google Analytics or setting up conversions or goal tracking or event tracking or even campaign tagging. And you want to test that to see if it's working. The best way to do testing inside of Google Analytics, so there are different tools that you can use to test. There's the Google Analytics debugger and, and different tools like that, which I'll link to from the blog post. But you can do quite a bit of testing right inside Google Analytics using the real-time reports. So the first thing you have to do is isolate yourself. So that's not a big deal if you're my site late on a Friday night, which is when I'm recording this video. So not too many people are learning about Google Analytics and Excel and stuff on a Friday night because unlike me, they actually have lives. But if you go to another site like this site here, which I'm blurring out, you can see there are many more users. So in this case, it would be a little trickier to identify just my visit. And so there are a couple of different ways that I recommend doing that. So first, the easiest way to kind of get yourself at least part of the way there is to click on locations and try to find your location. So in this example, because I live right smack dab in the middle of Philly, it's actually detected my location correctly. But there are sometimes it assigns me, even though I'm also accessing my site from my house, it will put me in kind of weird suburbs outside of Philly. So this isn't always very accurate. When I lived in Tampa, the same thing happened. That's not me. I haven't been in Tampa for quite a while and then someone's visiting from Fayetteville. So the easiest way for me to identify myself would be to um, just say, well, since I'm the only one in Philly, it's pretty safe to assume that this is me. And it goes without saying that you actually have to have your site open when you do this because you're not gonna show up in Google Analytics if you don't have the site open. But Anything you click on inside any of these reports automatically becomes a filter, which is great. That's very useful in being able to narrow down who you are. So now anything that I look at, if I go to traffic sources, I'm going to see how I got to my site. That is correct. I went right to it. So if I go to Google, and I put in Annie Cushing and I go to my site that way, this is now going to update. And I no longer came from none, which is drag. I now came via organic. And anything I look at is going to be isolated to what I'm doing at that time. So now if I change from my homepage to resources, you'll see this update. Now I'm on the resources page. And these are all indicative of different things I've done on the site. This breaks it down by second, this breaks it down by minute. Okay, now where this can be useful is if you have event tracking on your site or you're trying to set up events, you can click on events and do whatever it you do on your site to trigger that event and you want to change this from active users to events and try to trigger that event. If your event tracking is set up properly, this will work. Similarly, with conversions, this will give you your active users and your goal hits. So if I wanted to test let's say my contact form to see, because of course I have goal conversion tracking set up for each of my forms. And if I go in here and I test my form, I say test at test.com. Yes, analytics audit, test, and click let's connect that will show up in here and you see it right here. That's the goal that I just triggered and you just saw this update, my contact submission. So all that to say, this is just a really good way of being able to test things that you're setting up on your site. Once you get past being able to identify yourself, 
that, that can be the trickiest part. There is one other trick that I'll show you. Like, let's say that you live in a large city like I do, and let's say you go into your locations. I choose United States and I click on Philadelphia. Well, now there are two other people in Philadelphia and I'm actually not on this site right now. So if I were on this site, there would be a third user. Well, now someone just bumped off. But let's say you're in a, an even larger city or you're doing this in the middle of the day. Typically, you're not going to be doing too much user testing on a Friday night when not too many people are on the site. So let's just say there are multiple people from your location or you're not sure that the strange city that Google has located you in is actually you. Then what you can do is click out of the location and we'll go back into mine so I'm not revealing any client data and open up kind of a, an obscure page on the site. So typically I'll go into the blog and I'll go way far back because I'm trying to find a page that not too many people would be visiting at that time. So this page from August 13, 2010 chances are if I'm on this page I'm going to be the only one on this page and so now you can see see this is the page yes this is the page that I'm on now if I click on this now I've filtered by people in the United States who are looking at this particular page and if I go into locations, then you should just see one user. So I've been in situations where I'm one of 30 plus people from Philly looking at a particular site. And then I pull up that obscure page. Well, the chances of someone else from Philly being on the same obscure page that I'm on are pretty low but I don't want to keep this filter because this filter is going to filter out everything else so if I look at another page or I try to I'm not even going to be able to do that because I have this filter in place so now I'm on the resources page and you'll see in content now there are no active pages well I'm on the site so obviously there's an active page but it's not showing up because I have this page filter. So we don't want that. So what I want to do is go back to location because my location isn't going to change. But now I've isolated that I am the only one in Philadelphia who's looking at that page. And when I drop that filter, now anything I do on the site, if I pull up my services page and I go to content, that's going to be me. If I do something to trigger an event, that's going to be me. If I do something to trigger a conversion, that's going to be me because I am now not going to be just mixed in with all of the other visitors from Philadelphia. So that's the best way to be able to isolate yourself so that whatever you do from this point forward, you're only going to be looking at your interactions.